A scatter plot is a graph, which is just a collection of individual points uh, on the plane. So you might have like your x and y axes, and you have all these different points just scattered around on the screen. Now it could be that we could come up with some function that can model the data. So it's like, ooh, I found a function that models all this data, maybe. But it could also be kind of like you see in the picture here that maybe there is no trend, no correlation to the data whatsoever. We often graph the data sets so that we can see with our own eyes, is there any type of relationship between these data points? So let's look at a couple examples. The scatter plot you see on the screen right now, uh, it compares the number of passing touchdowns of NFL quarterbacks from the 2011-2012 season versus their base salary. So how many touchdowns were they throwing versus how much they got paid? And you can see when you look at this graph right here, there doesn't seem to be any correlation between how much the quarterbacks were getting paid with how many touchdowns they were making. You look at a data point like this one right here and this one right here, where these two quarterbacks, they were making lots of touchdown passes, but their salary was pretty small. So in some respect, these, these quarterbacks are definitely being underpaid. Um, on the other hand, you look at, say, like the, this data point right here, where this quarterback wasn't making a lot of touchdown passes, but was making the most money of this whole group, right? So it doesn't seem like there was any connection between the pay and the touchdown passes. Why they were getting paid so much probably had more to do with celebrity or some other metric besides touchdowns, which, of course, you would think would be a, a good thing for a quarterback in the game of football. Um, on the other hand, we're going to look at this. We're going to look at this graph this time, this scatter plot, where, again, the horizontal axis is going to be the number of touchdown passes. But this time, we'll look at the quarterback rankings. In which case, you see there actually is a pretty strong correlation between the two. That is, that is, the bigger your ranking corresponds to the more passes you made. And the fewer passes you made, the lower the ranking was. And so this kind of leads to the idea that when you look at this data, it almost looks like the data fits some type of line. That we could draw a diagonal line that, for the most part, captures the relationship between the touchdown passes and the ratings of the quarterbacks. Is it going to be perfect? No, but we could use this line to try to make some predictions about the data. Now, this line that we're talking about is referred to as a regression line, or sometimes it's called the line of best fit. As another example, let's consider a local school district that wants to evaluate the relationship between class size and performance on standardized tests. So it collects data about, okay, here's the different class sizes that they have in this school district. 15s being the smallest, 30 being the biggest. And then they looked on the average on the standardized test. And we could see this downward trajectory that as the class size got bigger, the performance on the test seemed to go down. There was this relationship that almost looks like a linear relationship. And so when you graph this red regression line or this line of regression, line of best fit, you can kind of use that then to predict what's going on, that every time I go down this many units, I'll go over this many units. And we can actually then calculate and interpolate what data we can expect. Uh, that is, what would happen if we had like a 22 size class? What would we expect the average uh, test score to be? So I want to admit to you that most calculators, computer programs, like you can do this on your standard Texas Instrument graphing calculator or Microsoft Excel can do these things as well. But there's many, many uh, programs out there equipped with the ability to insert scatter plots. And then with that scatter plot, you can construct a line of best fit, the, the so-called least squares regression line. Now that regression line, it, it takes us beyond uh, the scope of the course we are in right now. Uh, I mean, it uses some techniques from linear algebra and statistics, which I don't want to introduce right now. But given that we are able to draw lines, I mean, after all, a line is just determined by two points. What one could do is try to just wing it. That is, could we eyeball the line of best fit? Could we just draw ourselves a line that seems like it fits the data without any sophisticated algorithm whatsoever? And the answer is we can. And so to illustrate this, I actually want to use the following example. Imagine we have an outdoor snack bar that collected data showing the number of cups of uh, hot chocolate, cocoa, uh, we're going to call that C, 
they sold when the temperature for the day was T degrees Celsius. So they want to find the relationship between the number of cups of hot chocolate they sold versus how hot it is. It makes sense that the hotter it is outside, the less likely people are going to buy hot chocolate. Now, of course, if you're like me, then I like to drink hot chocolate all the time. Much in the same respect, I like to eat ice cream all the time. When it's super cold outside, you can catch me eating ice cream. When it's super hot outside, you'll be catching me drinking hot chocolate and ice cream, of course. This, is, this, this isn't a seasonal thing. This is just for me all the time. So I'm sort of a weird outlier in that regard. But... If we look at the data set that this, this snack bar collected, they have the following. So we see things that like when it was two degrees Celsius outside, that's really close to freezing. I mean, in, in, in uh, Fahrenheit, for those who aren't familiar with Celsius, uh, zero degrees is the freezing point of water, zero degrees Celsius, and therefore that's about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So two degrees Celsius is really cold. They were selling lots of hot chocolate, 45 cups they sold in a specific afternoon. And it seems to be going up progressively. Uh, when, they, when it's four degrees outside, they uh, they sold 42 cups. When it's 10 degrees outside, uh, they sold 25 cups. When it was 18 degrees outside, they sold six cups. Things like that, right? And so you see this, this scatter plot on the screen right now. Now, if we wanted to, we could construct a line of best fit. And it would look something like the following, right? I mean, we we're, it's, it's going to be somewhat subjective if we don't try to use the algorithm, right? But... We might get something like that. We were trying to find something that seems to match the data pretty well. And so I'm going to draw a line that looks like the following. Again, it's very, very subjective here. The, the, the least squares regression algorithm I mentioned earlier removes that subjectivity from the situation. But we could still answer questions, you know, for our snack bar manager here who might not know much about linear algebra, they're still very well equipped to answer questions and make predictions using this least this, uh, this sort of guess on the line of best fit. So two things I'm gonna mention here is that, well, okay, let's first start off with an equation. Can we come up with a formula for this line? Now, a line is determined by two points, so if we can find two points on the line, we can we can uh, find an equation. Now, don't worry about the, the scatter plots themselves, the points that gave us the line. Look at the line itself and try to make some predictions. Like, so for example, if we look at when the temperature outside was eight, degrees Celsius that looks like it's a little bit above 30 so I'm going to say that's like 32 degrees again that's just kind of an estimate there and then at another point maybe we come over here when it was 16 degrees outside uh, again that's a little bit above 10 uh, and so I'm going to say that was 12 uh, 12 cups of cocoa were sold on that given day so I'm going to take these two specific data points points that are on the line I just drew 8 comma 32 and 16 comma 16 comma 12 and I'm going to use that to build a line so the first thing I would do is look at my slope formula my slope um, it's going to be rise over run and notice how I oriented my graph I put as the horizontal axis the temperature and as the vertical axis the cups of cocoa so my I, I'm thinking of when the temperature is such and such what will be the number of cups sold that day so we would take 12 minus 32 divided by 16 minus 8 uh, we see here that 12 minus 32 is negative 20 over 16 minus 8, which itself 8. You can simplify that fraction to be negative 5 over 2. Or you could do, uh, you could do negative 2.5 if you prefer. That would be the slope of this line. Then using the, slope for, the, the point slope form of the line, I'm going to get that the number of cups, take away and pick your favorite data point, of the two blue points we chose. I'm gonna use the first one of eight comma 32. So we're gonna take C minus 32. This is gonna to equal to negative five halves times T minus eight. This is my point slope form of the line. I'm now going to solve this equation for C that is put in slope intercept form. To do that, we're gonna distribute the negative five halves. That is, we'll distribute the slope. So we get negative five halves T uh, plus, because it's a double negative now, uh, five halves times eight, well, two goes into eight four times, four times five is 20. And then we're going to add the 32 to both sides of the equation. And now we have our formula ready to go. The number of cups of cocoa we sell should be approximately five, negative five halves times the temperature in Celsius plus 50, uh, 52. 
like so. So this is going to give us our model. We just built this model by looking for an equation of a line that fits the two points that seem to be on the regression line. And so coming down here then, we're going to use this equation to try to make predictions about how many cups of cocoa are we going to sell with specific temperatures. So looking at the first one, let's say that T is equal to 9 degrees Celsius. How many cups of cocoa will we expect to sell on that day? Well, the number of cups is going to equal negative 5 halves times 9 plus 52, for which we're going to get 9 times 5 is 45 over 2 plus 52. Probably want to switch this to a decimal. I mean, I've been using fractions, but a decimal might be more helpful here. Uh, 2 goes into 45. 22.5 times plus 52. And so then we would add the negative 22.5 to the 50 to the 52. And that's going to give us 29.5. Now you can't have half a cup of hot chocolate there. So we really would be saying something like, oh, okay, we're going to sell about 29 to 30 cups on this day. And again, this is just an estimate. We don't expect that this model is going to be 100% perfect, but we expect the error to be relatively small. We expect within a certain margin of error to sell 29 to 30 cups of hot chocolate on this given day. Well, what if about, on the other hand, what if we tried the same question again with 24 degrees Celsius? Well, in that case, the cups of cocoa would equal negative 5.5 over 2 times 24 plus 52 here, um, for which case two goes into 24 uh, 12 times. Uh, 12 times five is gonna give us 60, so you get negative 60 plus 52. That adds up to be negative eight. Negative eight cups of cocoa, does that even make any sense right here? Clearly, you kinda can't get less than, than zero in a situation. And you should mention that models have limitations, right? The thing is, once you get sort of outside of reasonable data set, you can't expect this model to be perfect all the time. We could probably say something like we would anticipate to not sell any, any cups of cocoa on this specific day. And again, for those who are not familiar with Celsius measurement, 24 degrees Celsius would be about approximately 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's a pretty warm day outside. So you won't even expect to sell a lot of hot chocolate on a given day. Unless, of course, it's me. You know, I, I like hot chocolate still, even on a hot day, uh, even on a nice, nice uh, spring day, like 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. But again, models have limitations. You can't expect them to be perfect. We expect there to be some error when it comes to a model. But when it comes to models, we expect if it's a good model, the error will still be small. And we can come up with linear regression lines to match up with the data we see in the scatter plot. Clearly, the better the algorithm you use to find the line, the less erroneous your data is going to be. But for our purposes, we could draw a line that looks like it fits, pick two points on that line, not the data set necessarily, but pick two points on that line and then build an equation of line that matches that data. And we can use that to make predictions about linear relationships on data.